scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We have come desperate. We have come hungry. It says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst. There is an assurance that they will be filled. Bless him, bless him from the depth of your heart. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your whole Worship the King, the Maker, the Creator of the ends of the earth. And I, and I, I'm lost without you. strength when I am weak you are the treasure that I seek you are my all in all it's not a special number is a cry I'm seeking you as a precious jewel not to give up I'll be a fool for you are my all in all 
are the mysteries of the kingdom sometimes we're in a rush and we just hurry things and we miss prophetic moments there is something the Spirit of God is doing It 
voice in your prayer hallelujah One. healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for oh. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 9, my God, such awesome presence in this place. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. This morning is a prayer meeting. It says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and authority shall be upon his shoulder. And among his many names, he shall be called, not just he shall do, he shall be called a wonderful counselor. And that that son is also a mighty God. He is a wonderful counselor. And he's a mighty God. The possibilities of God are captured in his names it is consistent with the character of God to reveal his might to reveal his power to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his person in and through his names so all through history from Abraham Jacob Moses all of them had encounters with various dimensions of the might the power the wisdom the glory of god and for every encounter he would capture that moment in a name and preserve it for generations to come so that if you wanted to experience that dimension again the spirit of god will move through you to invoke that name in the name is the experience so when we call him a wonderful counselor when we call him the mighty God it means then that we seek that dimension of him as a wonder walking God when we call that name please be seated at chapter 4 we we'll begin our reading from verse 28 just a charge this morning and we pray as far as I'm concerned, if I drop the mic and go back, I think this moment of worship was worth the while. Sometimes we just need to stay. I've learned by scripture and by experience that the way we run in this kingdom is to stay. We run by remaining. We run by staying. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4, please. KJV. Thank you. It says, For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. 29. We're reading to verse 30. Verse 29 now. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. The apostles are praying now. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. 30 by stretching forth thy hand to heal watch this and that signs and wonders may be done by the name there it goes again signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus his names hide his power his names preserve his power when you call him Rapha he does not prosper he heals when you call him Jireh he does not heal he prospers this is this is is very important there were names and there were enchantments there were attributes that the nation of Israel were taught for instance they were taught a spiritual formula that every time their enemies were greater than them and it was clear that defeat was imminent they would not just cry and say, God of Israel, help us. Uh -uh. There was a chance that they would begin to raise. You are good. 
and your mercies endure forever that the moment they began to chant that it didn't matter the size of the army something about the jealousy of god would arise to defend their cause this we must learn the names of god are an advantage to us an advantage that provokes the multifaceted dimension of his person now I'm interested in just establishing a point this morning and we pray and this is it that every dimension of God every dimension of God has its dynamics of operation you have to understand this in as much as the possibilities of God in Christ are unlimited and all available to the saints we may not fully step into the experience of the power the glory the might of God until we understand the spiritual dynamics that control and release these operations hallelujah there are two dimensions of the operation of the Word of God and even God the way he operates the first is called the prophetic dimension realities from his standpoint they are always finished his realm is now are we together now God does not operate with time time is not a factor it's not a component in his dealing his personality cannot he does not even exist in the realm of eternity because eternity is also a function of time it's just a summation of infinite dispensations but eternity is also a function of time God dwells in a realm that is neither eternity nor time the name of his realm is now so you don't say god i will no 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 there's no i will there's no i was there's no such thing as that present ever true that's his realm he fragmented himself and created time to help men catch up with the pace of his glory without time we would never be able to know god are we blessed yeah that means that there is the prophetic dimension of spiritual realities but then the second dimension is the experiential manifestation of these realities in our lives here and now so the fact that you find it from scripture the fact that the character of god supports a dimension of spiritual possibility does not mean the saints will necessarily experience it i think this is where most many well-intentioned believers continue to flatter themselves we read we even pray and we anticipate the workings of the word in our life in experience and many times we do not capture the full weight of what the bible intends for us to capture and the reason is because interfacing the prophetic dimension and its experiential manifestation there are dynamics that connect their operation they are called mysteries matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus himself was teaching and he said it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom they are called the mysteries of the kingdom are they they represent a body of spiritual knowledge the modus operandi of the kingdom they are responsible for spiritual manifestations they are responsible for making visible making manifest is the word doxazo the unveiling of the glory of god the multifaceted dimensions of his glory so it is true that god prospers but i may quote that scripture and live my life never having that experience it still does not mean God cannot prosper are we together it is true that God heals it is true that God lifts it is true that there is speed in the kingdom it is true that God restores it is true that God can honor a man all of these possibilities are a reality but connecting them are mysteries and we must be open to not only know the outcome but understand the methodology assigned for their manifestation for instance when you want to rise financially there are many things the bible says a diligent hand for instance shall be made fat is that true yes the bible says how that the lazy man would not sow and his excuse will be the weather the atmospheric condition 
and it says you will beg in harvest the bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty so knowing that god prospers is important but not enough i must understand the spiritual dynamics that release that reality to be at work in my life are we together now i want to share with us just one key for this morning and then we'll pray that is responsible for causing god to be made manifest in the life of a believer as the god of wonders the thing about God I have learned, and I, I respect God and I love him with all my heart, but I truly fear him. When you walk with God for a while, you get to a point where it first starts as confusion because it looks like something about his character, his, his love, the, the synergy between his love and his, for want of word, his discipline, that as wonderful and as loving as God is, he can be so silent while a believer wallows in ignorance yet all of these factors his mercy and etc are available the awareness of his love should not make us take god for granted his laws are strict his laws are unbending they require thorough knowledge and they require application to its fullness the glory of god i've said it again and again that the glory of god only shows up as a testament that his patterns have been followed to the latter at the expense of man's eternal doom he sits in heaven love while people flock to hell every day because he's done all to be done to redeem man but as compassionate as benevolent as merciful as he is someone left earth this morning and is now in hell and god is still on the throne and he's still called love the awareness of of the power and the respect god has for his word and his principles should cause us to really look carefully that just because god loves us does not mean our lives will continue to receive results indefinitely we must be like spiritual archaeologists searching for the mysteries that control the dimensions we seek to be made manifest in our lives are we blessed yeah. so every dimension of god has its dynamics it must be understood and it must be engaged one of the principles that the bible reveals that is responsible for the manifest power of God, for his wonder working power in the life of any believer is the ministry of heartfelt prayer. Jeremiah chapter 33, please, and verse 3. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. It says, call unto me and I will answer. And I will not only answer, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You have a responsibility. Your responsibility is to acknowledge your limitation. Your responsibility is to express humility by calling unto me. And my response is that I will answer. The Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him not nigh them that need him he is nigh them that call upon him calling upon the lord is is an art that we must learn we must learn murmuring around god is not calling on upon him now most times just because god is hearing what you are saying does not mean you are praying are we together calling upon the lord does not mean engaging him in a discussion uh -uh. calling upon the lord must come with an attitude of humility a recognition that there is a god above you there is a government that you submit to and that it is almighty all powerful able to step in and help call upon me he says and i will answer it's an assurance i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not so i can call upon the name of the lord 
I can cry. I can use the mystery of heartfelt prayer to provoke the mighty one from his throne to my situation. Please do not downplay the power of prayer. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, the Bible says, He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And then he paints a very interesting scenario. He says, um, there was a city. There was a judge in that city which feared not God, neither regarded man. May God never make this kind of man show up in your life. In the name of Jesus, what a wicked man that must be. You don't fear God, you don't regard men. Then the Bible says there was also in a city, verse 3, a widow, a helpless woman, her system of defense had been gone. And the Bible says she came to him and said, avenge me of my adversity. Now notice that the woman came with clarity. She didn't come and say, I'm a widow. What can you do for me? Uh-uh avenge me my adversary verse 4 it says and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself though i fear not god nor regard man five yet because this widow troubled me ah did the bible not say give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem that a man can take the incense of prayer and knock on the gate of heaven until god arises and shows up over your situation it says i will avenge her less by her continual coming or importunity she wearies me verse 6 and the lord said hear what the unjudged just said 7 and shall not god avenge his own elect which cry not which think not which wish you may be his elect but that cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them your assignment is to cry and to stay there to cry and to stay there to hold on to the four horns of the altar lord there is something happening around my domain that is not consistent with your character i have read through scripture and i have seen that the path of the justice as a shining light it does not look so in my life i call upon the government of heaven and you stay there the challenge is most times when we pray we do not sustain the staying power to remain the bible says to cry day and night are we blessed day and night isaiah 7 verse 11 i found this scripture please can we have it on um, to, uh, let's have it from amplified very powerful scripture please don't forget this scripture for the rest of your life because we're about to pray shortly ask for yourself a sign not for your neighbor ask for yourself a sign a token or proof of the lord your god one that will convince you that god has spoken and will keep his word he said ask it either in the depth below or in the height above let it be as deep as shawl or as high as heaven god is daring you he's saying you ask for a sign that means it is not unbelief to say lord bring a token to my life that becomes a consolation to my christian experience i i have not seen the kind of results that i require for my stability and i i provoke your might over my life he's daring you Ask for a sign. Ask for a token. Ask God to show up like Gideon did. He says, stretch your imagination from border to border. Take it low or take it high. God is able to deliver. Ask for a sign. Ask for a sign. Father, you brought me to this city. You asked me to come to this city. I am 10 years in this city and there's nothing that looks like the goodness of God. I ask you to arise and step in. And God says, in two weeks, you will own a house. And he said, Lord, I have 50,000 in my account. That's all I have. He said, I know that. That's exactly why I'm telling you this. You have, you have called forth a dimension of me, my goodness. And whilst you are there talking with the Lord, someone is being, someone is, 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 is waking up from his sleep for your sake. And the Lord is saying, out of the many properties you have, give this person one of them. 
and you see when that happens to you do you know listen listen we walk by faith but the end of faith faith must graduate to trust the difference between faith and trust is that faith is purely based on the integrity of god are we together now completely and that's important but trust is based on the integrity of god plus a track record of his faithfulness in your life are we together yeah so the first day they ask your wife to cook for you that's fate you've never tasted of her delicacy so you are hoping she knows what she's doing and then when you when you taste of it and you see that your wife is good like the Lord is good are we together you archive that memory and it begins to grow from one week two weeks after 10 years when you say cook for me you are not hoping she will get it right it has moved from just mere faith to trust you know she's competent but your your even your senses can relate to an experience that attests to the fact that she's that competent david stood before goliath and he said the god who delivered the bear the lion he drew from that he was not just having blind faith like well if no 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 he had this level of certainty and let me tell you this god has an obsession to be believed and if you mean business with him he will he will shift systems and structures to show you how mighty he is because he knows that when you trust him your conviction will compel many to follow him conviction is powerful come see a man come see a man do you not think that someone would have said ah what suddenly happened to you come see a man the man who was healed at Gadara went and brought ten cities ten cities one man conviction is powerful and we're going to pray father whatever you have to do in my life in this season to give me the kind of conviction that draws men to you are we together now there has to be something spectacular in your life I came to lead us to pray that God will rend the heavens in a spectacular way and reveal his power, his grace, his glory over our lives, our families in a way and a manner that will bring glory to the name of the Lord. I had the privilege of having a, a very brief and wonderful session with um, one of the fathers of faith in this nation and there were things and testimonies that he told me that by the grace of God even at this level of work with God I had to sit down and it looked like I wasn't born again I said my goodness God is this what you are doing in the life of people you see it is very healthy to be provoked unto godliness there is are we together now yes sometimes we come from backgrounds that have very 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 mediocre references to god that means that you have not seen god do something that will stretch you sometimes god encourages you by taking you somewhere where he's doing big things and it will stretch your faith you will come back and say lord i'm sorry i'm sorry for my perception about you I came to you not wanting to embarrass you with my needs but now I remember that you are able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that I ask and when I'm done asking above all that I think you are still able to do it hallelujah I have made up my mind that as far as God is concerned as far as my faith and my trust is concerned I will not place any limitation on God there is nothing that he wants to do in and through my life that I will not allow him to be careful when you conclude about God sometimes we interact so much within the domain of the flesh 
we are used to men failing us we are used to men not being able to do so much so when we come to god we come with that same perception god is it true that you are able to make a way in the wilderness are you aware that the last one year we've had a pandemic on earth are you aware of this then he reminds you that once upon a time samaria was a desolate place to the point that women ate their children we've not gotten that bad do you know the compassion that a mother has for her child and yet two women will come and discuss what kind of hunger will make two women eat a whole child a whole child is how many plates of food and yet they ate that child by the next day they were about to eat the other child there's a name he's called ancient of days that means he's he's seen his creation he studied their vacillations and he's been faithful through it all he can be trusted are we together call on to me call on to me concerning that financial situation call on to me concerning this family situation call on to me you are not alone thank god for your intellects hear me the bible says in proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 he said trust in the lord with all your heart you have understanding but he says lean not unto it because understanding is limited we see in part and therefore we prophesy in part trust in the lord with all your heart then he says lead not on your own understanding he says in all your ways next verse acknowledge him and the promise attaches that he will direct your path the next verse verse 7 says be not wise in your own understanding he says fear the lord and turn away from evil trust in the lord trust in the lord trust in the lord man Imagine. listen these things are testaments to provoke us God is able prophesy to yourself say God is able please say it say it say it and believe what you are saying God is able when you are saying it think about that financial mountain say God is able think about your health situation God is able and he's able to do it speedily because he said what's yes thou are we together now he says i will hasten my word god can give speed of performance to his word i will hasten my word because destiny is measured by time there is a way god can give speed to a man to a people to help you redeem time call on to me and i will answer lord i bring before you my children there is need for your mighty hand upon their lives and he shows up in power lord grant us grace we are unable to focus on the matters of the kingdom because of these bills and these lawsuits and these financial situations and he shows up if you've been evil know how to give good gifts how much more will your heavenly father You stand before that mountain and all you need to do is to call him when he comes you step back and allow him with the mountain and then he will show again that he is God of do you know there's something I have learned about God God likes fighting there is something about God and battles there is something about about the process of victory that brings him profound glory he likes the saints to see the process not just the result so many times he will ask you to watch while he makes a mess of the devil and situations and circumstances do you know it's really not the result that makes you praise him is how the result comes are we together most times if he just brings the result you may trivialize how it came so he will allow you to be there and you watch you watch dimensions of his wisdom beating down satan and situations and circumstances 
at a point you will no longer be interested in the result is a revelation of his glory and his love and his might that overwhelms you you will thank god for the result but it will no longer matter i've seen god do a few things in my life and honestly i can tell you there are things that god has done in my life that leaves me in awe and in wonder and he's given me the grace to preach and teach from the standpoint of that assurance and that confidence i don't claim to know everything about god but sincerely i will tell you there are some things i know one of it is that when god decides to invest his jealousy upon a man get out of the way because he will clear anyone and anything that stands that way so when you see god bring his power and his grace upon apostle goodheart upon this great ministry you will wait just when you think you've seen it all and then he says no i am god i will show you layers of my glory layers of my power this is very important the jealousy of God is a dimension that has hardly been studied in the body of Christ when he says I am a jealous God that is good news jealousy is not a negative quality it's what makes you protect and preserve without jealousy you cannot have attention and emotional connect towards anything and anyone hallelujah many of you have So when you lift up your voice that's like a child calling his father if you are a child indeed god should not be silent when he hears you speak if you are a son indeed the bible says that hagar cried together with her young lad and strangely before her voice got to heaven the voice of the young lad had reached the heavens and god came and said what is going on here and she began to lament and suddenly an oasis came out of a desert hallelujah i know that god can arise for those who take him serious those who pray is it all right if we pray this morning it takes discipline it takes faith to pray but i assure you if and when we pledge our lives to pray the bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous it says it avails much it can produce power it can produce wonders I'm a product of the ministry of prayer I know what prayer can do if you pray and you pray with understanding and pray with faith you will disarm the powers of hell you will allow God to step in in dimensions beyond your imagination was it not in the book of Acts the Bible says how that the apostle was caught and kept in prison and then it says prayers were offered day and night in fact let's look at Acts chapter 12 and then we we'll arise to pray we need the God of wonders to show up for us. Acts chapter 12, we're reading the first 10 verses. Verse 1, please. Acts chapter 12 and verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex Saturn of the church. Verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then they were the days of unleavened bread. Uh-huh. And when he had apprehended him, the Bible says he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending that after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but, hallelujah, but prayer was made without season, keyword, without season, of the church unto god for him and when herod would have brought him forth the same night peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison uh-huh 
and behold an angel of the lord came unto him in response to the prayer and a light shined in prison and he smote peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands and the angel said to him gird thyself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me verse 9 and he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he was thought he saw a vision verse 10 verse 10 Please listen this is a very powerful mystery without influence you cannot do much for the kingdom you need visibility for your business you need visibility for ministry you need visibility It's one thing to be anointed is one thing to be called but it's another thing to be accepted and embraced that the dimension of God committed to you there is a demand upon it but I tell you in the realm of the spirit there are iron gates just because you left the prison does not mean you are free please keep that scripture there verse 10 he says he came to the iron gate that leaded unto the city which opened to them of its own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed there are people as we pray this morning your businesses you have products and services that if people knew listen my my one of the dimensions of God's wonder that I pray will happen as we pray this morning is the grace for visibility there is a grace that can unveil a man like you unveil a product from a carton and lift him up like a trophy and say hear ye him it's a grace it's a grace that can come as the wonder working power of God whilst we pray hallelujah it says and it was noised abroad that Jesus had come your products there are so many people here respectfully speaking you have done your best in terms of your intellectual preparation all you need now is to be connected through the mystery of visibility to the men and the women who need what you stand for and look how difficult it is without that grace there are people today, there are people in this nation. Hallelujah. There are people in this nation. Honestly, if this grace should come upon them in addition to the value that they have, the demand that will be placed upon your life, your children and your children's children will eat from it. But that grace is not there. So many people die with gifts many people live with gifts there are some of you here you are not supposed to be where you are you are supposed to your your preparation demands that you should be in the palace there are worship ministers all across this nation sincere people well-meaning people but this grace for visibility is not there and they die with their gifts they sing you know i've heard a few people at a personal level and i I'm, I'm in shock why is the world not listening to you I have I have heard and seen men and women of God respectfully speaking I remember meeting I was uh, I think the, the eastern part of this nation and I had the opportunity to talk with a dear woman and whilst we spoke you know I mean this woman came to me for counseling and for prayer but then I just had some time of conversation and I was almost going down my knees to say madam pray for me I'm, i think i'm the one who needs your grace but the grace for visibility please take serious what i'm saying life will be hard until men can see and discern what you represent it was bishop oyedeko that gave a story when they started remember that gave a story
out like a curtain and boom I know families that are under the siege of this absence of visibility great people wonderful people well-meaning people but doors never open so whilst we're praying I want you to be angry this morning that this iron gate the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder praise the name of the Lord yes I believe this you only receive the reward of kings when God connects you to kings you cannot receive the reward of kings in the prison even if you are innocent oh Joseph the prison is not the place for reward the prison is where both good and bad meet there it's a dangerous place to remain whether you are a wine presser whether you are an interpreter of dreams whether you are a baker if you are in the prison it's a place of confinement but you must trust God for the grace that makes the king to send for Joseph and the king sent for Joseph and the Bible says they brought him out of his dungeon the Holy Spirit is ministering to someone this morning because the, for you the wonder that God wants to do in your life is to use your life as an answer to someone who whether in the secret or in the open said can anything good come out of this family and they are right except that you came from this conference the God of wonder is about to show up in a way and make a definite statement do you believe that please rise up on your feet I like you to be patient while we pray because we are going to pray prayer is powerful I came standing in faith with the grace over this house so that we will make some things happen in our lives my God is able to do just what he says don't sing listen he will do He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Here's your part now. Don't give up on God. Cause He won't give up on you. He's able. God is able. Listen. In this Bible, People had their situations turned overnight they slept as prisoners and by the end of the next day they were in the palace whilst you pray please let your heart be open God you are able to do this for God you are able to do this for your And let us pray so that we can have real results in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ please lift your voice and let's pray in the spirit everywhere inside outside those following online we're going to pray please forget about who is but at your left or right just just lift your voice and pray unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come Celebrandos que te vas a la catosa brande que te baladaba. Se va catos que banda se de balaca. Lift your voice and pray. Shata pa cato branda gado se telebacata. The God of wonders. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. Pray. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you.
Kaparado Sadevala Kato Branda Katavala Daba Keparuta Sada Branda Katala Kato Siadavala My life must change My destiny must reveal the glory The power, the grace Glory, the power, the grace of God Those who are following from whatever nation, please take time to pray. Participate, follow in prayer. Call on to me and I will answer. says what things soever ye desire it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it meaning you can never have what you have not received you only have what you have received it says what things soever now in one minute I, I like you to lift up your voice that issue of concern that seems to defy the name of the lord in your life in the next five minutes i'd like you to lift up your voice before i bring prayer points lift your voice and cry before your maker in faith knowing that there is a god who can answer go ahead and pray go ahead and pray some of you are trusting god to reveal himself as the god of increase some of you are trusting god for speed trusting god for restoration don't be silent I will lift up my eyes. I will lift up my eyes. Of businesses, the maker of ministries. Oh, 
Oh, you are not wasting your time, I assure you. Please pray. The heavens are open over us. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.